Laparoscopic Abdominal Cerclage. This video will review the clinical and surgical approach for laparoscopic abdominal cerclage. There are no conflicts of interest to disclose. Throughout this video, we will review the indications for abdominal cerclage, demonstrate a surgical approach to laparoscopic abdominal cerclage, and review specific considerations during surgical planning. Cervical insufficiency is estimated to affect nearly 1% of all pregnancies and can lead to preterm birth, premature rupture of membranes, and ultimately pregnancy loss and neonatal death. Cervical insufficiency is defined as painless dilatation and shortening of the cervix before term and without labor. This is commonly identified in pregnancy as a short cervix less than 20 millimeters. There are both medical and surgical options for the treatment and prevention of cervical insufficiency. McDonald and Sherodkar cerclage are placed vaginally. The McDonald cerclage is performed most commonly targeting the external os. Open abdominal cerclage was first introduced in 1965. It has since been translated safely to a minimally invasive approach. Placement of an abdominal cerclage at the level of the cervicoismic junction maintains the integrity of the cervix at the level of the internal os. There is strong literature support for the efficacy of abdominal cerclage in reduction of preterm birth and increased gestational age at delivery. Abdominal cerclage is indicated in cases of failed vaginal cerclage. It is also recommended following surgical shortening procedures such as trachelectomy or cone biopsy, and in the presence of uterine anomalies causing extreme cervical shortening. Here we present a minimally invasive approach to abdominal cerclage. First, placement of a uterine manipulator when cerclage is placed pre-pregnancy. Next, the vesicouterine space is developed. Third, broad ligament windows are created bilaterally and uterine vessels are identified. The cervicoismic junction is then identified. The cerclage is placed medial to the uterine vessels and sutured posteriorly. After a thorough pelvic survey, the vesicouterine fold is tented upward and incised to develop a bladder flap. Peritoneal incision is extended into the broad ligament to allow for development of a broad ligament window and aid in uterine artery skeletonization. Uterine vessels are identified while creating a window in the posterior broad ligament. This window will aid in direct visualization of suture passage. Ureters are identified to confirm their location is away from the cervicoismic junction and lateral to the window. Similarly, a window is created on the contralateral side. Interestingly, the uterine artery on this side is found more cephalad than would be expected, emphasizing the importance of window creation in planning suture placement. The location of the internal os is identified posteriorly, just cephalad to the insertion of the uterosacral ligaments. This insertion point is marked with a bipolar bilaterally. This is repeated anteriorly. An OCT1 propylene monofilament suture is placed into the abdomen through the 10 millimeter umbilical port. A 30 degree laparoscope allows for direct visualization of the posterior insertion and anterior exit sites that were previously marked. These can be identified through the broad ligament windows. Care must be taken here to pass the suture medial to the uterine vessels without passing through the canal of the cervix. The suture is then passed anterior to posterior on the contralateral side using the previously marked locations at the level of the internal os. When laparoscopic abdominal cerclage placement is performed preconception, a uterine manipulator is helpful to antivert and retrovert the uterus to improve ease of passing the suture. The suture is then tied intracorporeally with six knots at the posterior cervicoismic junction. Anti-adhesive barrier is placed at the location of the broad ligament windows to aid healing and prevent adhesion formation and bowel herniation. We will recount the steps briefly and review specific considerations for surgical planning, including timing of placement in relation to pregnancy and specific suture selection. Again here, we will review the steps. First, insertion of a uterine manipulator, followed by creation of a bladder flap, development of broad ligament windows, identification of the cervicoismic junction, and finally, cerclage placement and suturing.
Here, a bladder flap has been created and the anatomy of the broad ligament window is demonstrated. The ureter is identified through the window created in the broad ligament. This is similarly repeated on the contralateral side. A uterine manipulator during this procedure is essential to optimize the view of suture placement and identification of the cervicoismic junction. During pregnancy, placement of an abdominal cerclage is associated with higher risk of reported complications, including conversion to laparotomy, hemorrhage, and bladder or bowel injury, in addition to the risk of pregnancy loss. Both polypropylene and braided polyethylene terephthalate, more commonly known as mersaline, have been reportedly used with good efficacy for laparoscopic abdominal cerclage. Generally, a cerclage suture should be permanent and carry minimal tissue reactivity in order to minimize the risk of tissue erosion. The ease of handling of the polypropylene suture laparoscopically, in addition to the permanence and reduced tissue reactivity, make it an ideal suture material for this procedure although there have been no head-to-head -head studies comparing the efficacy. Tying the suture posteriorly allows for ease of suture removal with a posterior colpotomy in the event that the uterus requires evacuation, for example, in second trimester pregnancy loss. In summary, laparoscopic abdominal cerclage placement is highly effective at preventing preterm birth in cases of demonstrated cervical insufficiency. It is a surgically safe procedure with a low risk of complications, and it can be performed preconception and postconception. However, it is safest when performed preconception or in the early first trimester. Thank you for listening to this presentation and thank you to our collaborators.